Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A, and I promise it will not be as long as it was last week, I promise. <laughs> so let's get started uh, with the very first question from Rubes J. What are your thoughts on using Louis Vuitton bags at work? Uh, I think it really depends upon the environment. If it's more of a office workplace, obviously, um, those are a little bit more reserved, a little bit more low key. You definitely don't want your handbag doing all the talk for you, if, you, if that makes any sense. Uh, but then again, it all depends upon how comfortable you feel, you know, rocking your bags, whatever it might be. Uh, I think any other type of uh, profession or any other type of workplace, I think it's a little bit more, you know, if it's a more casual workplace, obviously you can wear any kind of bag, but it all really, it, it boils down to the, um, to the professional uh, workplaces, it, you know, how comfortable you feel and stuff like that. So I think you should maybe test out the waters because you never know. There might be major handbag lovers out there, but <laughs> but because they haven't had someone talk about them or um, they just have very low key, you know, bags that they take into work. So it all depends upon the environment, definitely. Uh, okay. Reynaldo Blanco. Hi, many. Love your videos. Thank you. I was wondering your thoughts on the St. Laurent Sac du Jour. I was thinking about getting one for my mom for her 50th birthday. How cool is that? She's not the type to wear logos and I thought it would be a nice fit for her aesthetic. Do you have any other suggestions for designer bags without logos? Um, the Sac du Jour, I was actually checking it out. I, I really like it. I, I think it's a very simple uh, design. Uh, I like the pleating that it has on it. And there are a few different sizes that you can purchase. I think the one that I was looking at uh, retail for $3,400 here in the States. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a Birkin. Uh, it has the same kind of features, obviously without the, <laughs> the major difference of the label and the leather. Uh, but... I have heard it is a tad heavy, so maybe that's something to take into consideration. Uh, I jotted a few other ones down on here, um, and it is crossbody, so it's it's a very versatile piece. So I think it's pretty. It's it's a, it's a nice bag, uh, and uh, another one that I was thinking is the Prada Double Tote. I really like that bag. I don't know if uh, if it's something that I would uh, that I would purchase, but. Again, you just have the one little logo on the outside. It doesn't scream, you know, it doesn't have canvas all over it. So that's another great option to go with. Uh, but the, uh, the Sac du Jour is a very nice silhouette, very clean lines, very simple. So I think uh, if you do end up purchasing it, I think she'd be very, very happy with it. Uh, okay. Snitches 16. Hi, Minnie. I know, I know you love pink. What do you think of the new rose ballerine color for spring summer from Louis Vuitton? Is there an item you're eyeing? Um, well, I know that they just recently launched it and, uh, it is, it's a very soft baby pink from Louis Vuitton. And I really like the six ring uh, or the six key holder because you have the monogram canvas and then you have that beautiful light pink interior. Uh, I also, I also maybe <laughs> thought about getting the Empreinte clay cause they, uh, it came out in the Empreinte clay with that, with that color. And as much as I love the color and as much as I want an Empreinte piece, I don't know if I would go for the Rose Ballerine because it is such a light color. So I'm worried about color transfer. But those two are the ones that I'm definitely eyeing. <laughs> uh, okay. Ariel Sanchez. What are your thoughts on the Alma BB in Griot and Alma PM in Infra Rouge? Uh, okay. So the Griot from Louis Vuitton is a very, um, it's a vernis, it's a vernis leather. And the color is just this, I mean, magnificent kind of grape. Merlot. I don't know. It is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and I really, really like it. <laughs> and after, I think uh, it came out a month after I purchased my Cerise. And I remember going to the store and I, I was just kind of bummed, even though I love my Cerise. Don't get me wrong. I saw that griot color and I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's a major win. And as far as the Alma PM and Infra Rouge, uh, that again, just got recently launched. It's uh, Nicolas Gisquier. Um, spin, if you will, on the Alma. And I don't know how I feel. Uh, I think, obviously, I like Almas. I don't know. I thought I would be a, a bigger fan of the black and the red monogram canvas. But 
I don't know. There's just something that's not, I don't know. It's not as enticing as I thought it would be. And uh, I actually don't like the fact that it's, I believe it's a crossbody bag. It comes with a crossbody strap. So that is a major uh, no-no for me. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel. It has, um, I think it's, it has leather on the corners and I believe it retails for 3,300 or 3,400 here in the States. And it, there's just something about it. Maybe if I held it and I played with it, and I might feel a little bit different. But as of right now, I'm on the fence about it. I am. I never thought I'd say that, especially with Infra Rouge. Uh, okay. Uh, Janine Peterson. Hi, Minnie. What do you think of Tiffany & Co. small leather goods? I, I actually like them. I have one, maybe two, I two small leather goods from Tiffany. And I really like them. And what I like the most about uh, Tiffany & Co. is the fact that they pretty much keep to two colored leathers, which is the Tiffany blue or the teal and black. Uh, they have had uh, silver, like a metallic silver come out. I think a, a metallic red come out. But it's not something that the house normally, you know, has. But they always have the Tiffany blue and the black. And I absolutely love that. And I really like, they look very similar to other high-end luxury goods. Uh, but I don't know. It's just, it's just fun. I, I, I think they're very fun pieces. And so far I have had the best of luck with them. I haven't had any staining, any tearing or anything like that. So, uh, it's, I think, I think, they're very, I think they're very good. <laughs> and they're, they don't have a very high price tag, which is another great thing about them, especially for small leather goods. Uh, okay. Ashley Taylor. Uh, do you have any suggestions on a little black bag in the 500 to $600 price range? Um, the only one that I can think of, I, I mean, if you guys know out, if you guys know, if you guys have one out there, let me know and we'll, you know, we'll put it on the comments down below so we can help Miss Ashley out. Uh, but the only thing that I can think of is the Louis Vuitton Pochette Accessoire in Epi Black. Uh, and even though it retails for six eighty five, so it's a little bit more than your price range, but the Pochette Accessoire is a great little mini bag. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a shoulder bag. You can actually take off uh, the the uh, the little leather part and make it into a clutch. Uh, but it's it's a very it's it's a beautiful bag. It's epi leather, so you don't have to worry about vaquetta. You don't have to worry about anything like that. And uh, it's Louis Vuitton, so it has great great quality. So I think maybe that'd be an option for you to check out. But that's the only one that I can think of. Uh, okay. Everyday Glam. What are your thoughts on the micro collection that is supposed to be launching? I think in the fall, will you be picking up anything? And I not, I'm not too sure if you mean the uh, micro collection from Louis Vuitton, if it is, uh, when I was recently in Louis Vuitton, the sales associate and I were looking at, you know, the book for all the new, all the new bags coming out from now until December. And, they have, um, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it's this one, but they have these mini micro bags. So it obviously it has to be, duh. <laughs> they have these mini micro bags. They're not bag charms, but they're a bag that you can put on your bag. So it's kind of like a bag charm or you can use it as a little mini bag. We're talking, these things are tiny, tiny, tiny. And they're, uh, they're very expensive would I be buying something? Absolutely not. <laughs> number one, I'm not a big fan of bag charms, so I would never put a little bag on a bigger bag. Uh, I think it's kind of weird. I, it's not for me. And uh, two, I don't think I can get as much use out of it as I would want to. And we're t I'm telling you, these these bags, I think what the one that I saw was like two thousand dollars or fifteen hundred something like I don't even remember but they were so so small and I remember looking <laughs> looking at my sales associate and I said are you kidding me he's like no <laughs> I promise <laughs> so I it, yeah not for me <laughs> uh not at all uh okay Paris Sue what do you think of the Stella McCartney Falabella tote? I'm thinking about getting one because it is so different from my Louis Vuittons. Not the fold over, but the medium tote with the two chains. Would what what are your thoughts? Would love to hear your thoughts. Um, okay, so Stella McCartney the Falabella bag. I might be saying it uh, incorrectly, but I really, I absolutely love the take that this house has taken on fashion. Uh, all their leathers are non-leather and the interior lining is made out of recycled plastic bottles. And, um, 
and they're cruelty free, everything like that. They're pretty much trying to take their stand against, uh, against, you know, other fashion houses that use real leathers and stuff like that. And when we were in Italy, I saw tons and tons of replica. I didn't know at the time. I mean, I kept seeing this bag everywhere, like replicated, you know, little, little shops here and there. And, uh, at first, I didn't think it was for me. I'm not really, I was like, ah, it's not, I don't know. I, I'm not really into it. But then when, once I heard what Stella McCartney was doing and why she was doing it, and then I actually saw the fold-over clutch or the fold-over tote, and I actually like the fold-over tote one better than the one that just hangs on your body. And uh, I, I have to say, I really, really like it. I'm actually looking at a clutch that's 450 here in the States. It's a little smaller clutch, but it folds over. It's very, very cute. And, um, sorry, there's something in my throat. <laughs> uh, and I have to say to my dear, dear friend, Jackie or Buggin from Instagram, she has, uh, recently, I believe she pretty much got rid of all her Louis Vuittons. Uh, I think she has maybe a few left. Uh, she got rid of all her Chanel's and she has, she has started to acquire a, a very, uh, <laughs> a passion for, uh, for these bags and she posts them on Instagram and I absolutely love them. And it's just a fun spin on a different kind of, uh, different kind of look, if that makes any sense. So I'm, I'm digging them. I am digging them for sure. So we'll see, we'll see if I end up purchasing one. Uh, okay. Melanie Zuli, what do you think about the Syracuse PM? Uh, the Syracuse PM is from Louis Vuitton. It's in Demi Azor and it's pretty much a crossbody bag. It has very uh, simple detailed. It has one detailed pleat on the front, and I mean, it's it's a nice bag. It's very, like I said, it's very very simple. Um, it's not something that I would ever purchase because I'm not a big fan of crossbody bags. However, everyone that I know has that has had this bag, they absolutely love it. Uh, just one thing to make sure, uh, because it is demi azure and it does tend to hang lower. Just be careful because if you're wearing uh, highly saturated or highly dyed uh, items, clothing items, they might end up uh, color transferring. So just watch out for that. But it's a it's a very it's a very nice bag. Uh, okay. Tanya Lobo. What do you think about the Louise wallet, uh, from Louis Vuitton? I don't, I don't necessarily know exactly how I feel about it. I'm not too, I'm leaning more towards, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, the Louise ba uh, wallet retails for $685 here in the States. And pretty much what it is, it's a, um, it's a dual entry wallet. So it has a snap button closure on one side. And then when you flip it up on the other side, it opens up kind of like an insulate wallet. I think it has a total of 12 credit card slots. And, um, I, I the reason, I don't know, it's, it's kind it's very, very different. It's extremely versatile, uh, obviously because you have the front, the front snap closure. So you can put a few credit cards in there. You can put coin in there. And then if you turn it over, then you have the other eight credit card slots and then you have, you know, slip pockets on either side. Uh, the other side, the one that I just talked about, it kind of looks like it's not finished. It looks, I don't know, it doesn't look very complete, if that makes any sense. It feels like it's missing something. Uh, but it reminds me very much so of the Sarah wallet, and I'm not too big a fan on the Sarah wallet because of the of the credit card slots on the front. So um, I'm on the fence about that one as well. <laughs> you guys have definitely stumped me this week, uh, and uh, I don't know. It's it's got a great price point for a longer wallet. Like I said, 685 or 635. So, uh, it's definitely something to look at. And, uh, they, as, as I said, they were the monogram canvas. So I'm smack in the middle of it. Cause I like the fact that it's versatile, but I don't like the fact that the front has, uh, the Sarah, the Sarah wallet, um, features. Uh, okay. Cynthia Chester, could you share what size your agenda is? What is your opinion on the monogram print medium or large? Also what pen is that that you're using on this video? And this is in reference to the last Minx Monday. Um, this agenda is the uh, the GM agenda, the large ring agenda in Demi Ben. And um, what do I? F how do I feel about mon monogram prints? I'm, I like monogram print. Uh, it depends really on the bag. Some bags wear it better, if that makes any sense. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge, huge fan of Demi Ben. You guys know that especially because of the red interior and, and stuff like that. But the monogram, um, it's just, it's so iconic. It's so classic. And, uh, I, 
I I love it. I'm an I'm an LV addict, so I love pretty much every print that Louis Vuitton has. I I I think of different ways to interpret it or different ways to use it, if that makes any sense. And uh, I I absolutely love it. Yes, but I definitely think that some bags wear it better than others. Um, yeah. <laughs> I go back and forth. I pretty much stick to Monogram and to Damia Ben. Uh, and even though I'm a bigger fan of Damia Ben, I have less items of that print, which makes no sense. <laughs> it's probably because they don't offer as much in Damia Ben as they do in uh, in Monogram, which is, it, it's a shame. It really is. <laughs> and uh, this is a medium, or I'm sorry, this is a large. And what pen is that that you're using on this video? Uh, I'm actually using my Swarovski pen that I picked up. Oh man, I don't even remember where I got this, but uh, it has the little Swarovski crystals on the edge of the of the pen here, and then this is kind of like a shimmery white, but it's really really nice, and it's got the silver tone hardware. It writes very very smoothly, which I absolutely love because sometimes beautiful pens are so heavy, they're so bulky, and sometimes the 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 ink doesn't show up very very nice. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I did a uh, video on Get to Know Me or Who is Minx for All. And I was obsessed, obsessed with uh, with pens and pencils when I was growing up. I had a whole collection of pens. And I'd sit there <laughs> and I'd write on, on a notebook and, you know, just to see how the how the ink would come out. And my mom looked at me like, what the heck are you doing? And I'm like, they're, they're all different. They're all different. But they are. They really are. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, Bess Galt, what is your favorite hobby or favorite thing to do in your spare time? Um, I really like to read. I'm a big fan of reading. Uh, my favorite author is Dean Koontz. Uh, I like suspense thrillers and, uh, I love hanging out with Edward. <laughs> so we pretty much get to hang out. We run around the house, you know, playing with his toys and, uh, hanging out with family. I go over to my mom's house pretty much, or my parents' house pretty much every day. Uh, so <laughs> I am very attached to my family, but, uh, nothing, nothing, you know, out of the ordinary, I don't think. So it's just pretty much hanging out with family and reading. So, uh, oh, and antiquing whenever I can, because I'm a huge, huge fan of antiquing. <laughs> uh, okay. Svensk Bon Bon. I'm so sorry. Uh, number one, I noticed that sometimes LV canvas gets a shiny look after a while, especially the Demi Ben ones. Is there a way to avoid the shiny look? Um, no, there, there really isn't, but I did ask my sales associate about it because there, I know that there has been some talk about it in the past. And, um, the only thing that, that he can think of is the fact that, even though it's all the same fashion house, because you have some pieces that are made in the U S some pieces that are made in France and some pieces, you know, made in other, in other countries. Um, the canvas isn't always the same. I mean, do me a favor, get any two pieces that you have from Louis Vuitton, one from the U S and maybe one from France or, you know, a different kind of country and kind of compare the same print together. One will either be very rich and very dark. Um, very seldomly they are pretty much the same. So that's the only thing that I can think of. I think, um, it really depends on the canvas that they use and, uh, they're not really all the same, uh, because obviously you get different, uh, canvases from different places. And I think some of them either have a little bit more grains to them, a little bit more texture to them. And I don't think those will get as shiny, but I don't think there's anything that you can, that, that you can do to prevent it because it's going to happen, especially with age. Uh, a lot of the older Louis Vuitton pieces tend to have that, that shiny effect to it. So I, I don't think so, but if you guys know, or if you guys have any information, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, okay. And number two, do you have a signature scent? What are your favorite perfumes? Uh, I have, <laughs> obviously I have a quite a bit of perfumes <laughs> because I'm a super sniffer <laughs> and, uh, I recently ran out of two of my all time favorite perfumes. Uh, that is bond number nine, the scent of peace. Uh, I think I purchased it last year and I, I used it to death. Uh, another one is Chanel number no. five. I know, uh, you know, what? at first when I, when I first smelled Chanel number no. five, when I was younger, I hated it. I was just like, Ugh, it was so strong. It was so, 
Ugh, not me. And then the older I got, I started to appreciate it more. When you first put it on your skin, it doesn't really take that. No, it's such a complex perfume or fragrance that it, it evolves over the time that you wear it. And, uh, I absolutely love it. Um, especially when it's in its third hour of me wearing it, it kind of takes on a different spin. So Chanel number five, uh, uh, even the premier one is they're they're very different, but they they still smell somewhat similar. But I have one uh, a perfume that I have bought to death. I think I've bought not not even joking, probably like six different bottles of it. Uh, and every time I go back to it, I have worn it in the spring, summer, fall, winter. I know some th sometimes you're supposed to wear perfumes that are only for spring and summer. I'm not one of those people. If I like the way it smells, I'm going to wear it anytime I want to. But um, it's this one right here, which is Dolce & Gabbana's number three, La Imperatrice. I'm pretty sure I'm saying it wrong. But I love, love, love this perfume. This was uh, introduced by Naomi Campbell, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I think this is the only, they had six, or I'm sorry, they had 12 different perfumes with the numbers on them. And um, I think this is this one and number six are the last two that, uh, that have actually stayed around. And you can get it at Ulta or at Sephora. I think they're like 76 bucks for 3.3 fluid ounces. But the smell, it is so, so me. It lasts forever. It smells like, um, like grapefruit and melon. It has a very tiny hint, maybe of lily of the valley. It's such a, it's, it's such a soft fragrance, but it stays on you. It's not something that you put on and then two hours later, it's like, where'd it go? No one can smell it. I love this. If I could, this is actually my last bottle, so I'm trying to make it last as much as possible. Uh, but if I could buy this every <laughs> every single time and maybe only have this and Chanel and um, a few others, I would because I am that crazy about it. Uh, so this, I guess you could say this is maybe my signature scent. This one, and then at work, I used to wear um, Juicy Couture Viva, Viva La Juicy. I used to get a ton of compliments on that. And, uh, I also like flower bomb. I know you asked for my signature scent, but I'm just kind of giving you guys, uh, an idea of some of the things that I, that I tend to like for fragrances. Uh, okay. Now let's keep going. Uh, Natalie Cardenas, what is your opinion on the Louis Vuitton sack plat tote? Um, okay. So when I first, back in the day, when I first thought of the sack plat, I didn't like it. I didn't like how tall it was. Uh, it just seemed kind of awkward to me. But lately I have been looking at it and I really, I like it. I like it because it's something different that not everyone has out there. The only thing, like I said before, it does bug me that it's a little bit taller. So it might be a little bit more of a pain in the butt to get into your items. But at the same time, it's just a really nice top handle bag. It doesn't have a crossbody strap. It doesn't have anything like that. It's just a top handle bag that is absolutely just a simple, simple design from Louis, from Louis Vuitton. And I absolutely love that. The simplicity speaks volumes. So I'm a big fan. <laughs> uh, okay. Deborah, Deborah Gagliato. If you had to pick one Louis Vuitton and one Chanel from your collection, which ones would you choose? <sighs> That's pretty easy. I think I'd have to pick my Holy Grails. <laughs> Uh, so from Chanel, it would be my, uh, double flap jumbo and caviar, black caviar leather with a gold tone hardware. Uh, and from Louis Vuitton, I would have to pick the speedy 30 and multicolor Blanc. Um, just because when it comes down to it, I never thought in a million years I would own those bags and, uh, Louis Vuitton definitely because it that bag just made me fall in love with Louis Vuitton and made me become <laughs> the LV addict that I am. <laughs> so those two, definitely. <laughs> uh, okay. Laz. Hi, Minnie. I wanted your opinion on a new bag called Sienna. I couldn't justify the price. Please tell me your thoughts. Well, I'm glad you asked. The Sienna is the Damien Ben, um, 
bag that came out, but we don't have it in the U.S. as of right now. The only one that has it as of, well, I could be wrong, but is actually Australia. And um, I believe it retails for 1910 Australian dollars. And um, it it's a crossbody bag. It's, demi like I said, it's demi Ben. It reminds me of a Turin. It's very, very similar to a Turin, only it has a pleat on the front instead of it being flat. And um, I'm... I'm not a fan of it. Again, maybe it's because of the crossbody. It has a very, very small, um, what's it called? The very small, you know, double straps if I wanted to hand carry it. So it might be a little bit uncomfortable, uh, but I'm not, I'm not digging on it. No, but I am happy that the fashion house is starting to bring out other Demi Ben pieces because as I told you guys earlier, that, that print doesn't get as much love as it should. <laughs> uh, okay. And four minutes. Um, she had, at, or this person actually asked me about uh, the Celine spa service. I don't know if Celine offers a spa service for their handbags. I would like to know since I'm still fairly new to the brand. So if you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. But I did want to tell you guys that uh, when I was at Louis Vuitton uh, recently or, you know, a month ago, whenever it was, when I was talking to my sales associate, they said that they actually offer spa services for Louis Vuitton now. How freaking cool is that? So, um, I think they said that they do, um, they're, it's, it's very small right now, but I think they're going to venture into, into doing more thorough spa services, if that makes any sense or if you will. Uh, but they have, uh, I think she said that they do, um, cleaning of the textile lining or the microfiber lining. Um, I could be wrong, but maybe, maybe, uh, cleaning of Vaquetta. I don't remember, but I was so, so stoked to hear about it. I'm actually going to be heading to Louis Vuitton probably within the next two weeks. So I will ask her about it and see if any of the spa services changed, changed, and then I will let you guys know. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, okay. And the next, the very last one that I have, sorry, is called, is from Lori K. What do you think of the new Louis Vuitton kimono? Better than the Louis Vuitton Neverfull? Okay, so let's talk about this bag. The kimono bag uh, retails for, and I wrote down notes on it, retails for $32.50 here in the States. It's a tote. Uh, and number one, I I absolutely love it. It's a different bag. It's a different uh spin on a tote. It has a V, a metallic V in the middle of the, of the bag. It has two large, uh, handles on the top. It has calfskin leather with monogram canvas and it has four feet on the bottom. It is not a crossbody bag. There is something about this bag. The reason why it's called a kimono is because, uh, of the, the kimono, the, the clothing and the way that it kind of closes in the front. And that's pretty much the same look that the bag has. I don't know what it is. I like it. I love it. There's something different about it. And I think that's what I like about it, that it's so, so different. It's not your typical, uh, you know, vaquetta and the way that they incorporated the, the canvas with the calfskin leather. My goodness. I am a huge, huge fan. I cannot wait to hold it in my hot little hand. Who knows? Maybe my opinion might change, but as of right now, it is very pleasing to my eye <laughs> when I see it online. So I'm a fan. <laughs> Uh, but that's all I have. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for all the wonderful questions. I promised I wouldn't make it too long. I'm at 29 minutes. That's better than 42. <laughs> but I will see you all later this week. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.